Have you ever felt paralyzed by fear or overwhelmed by anxiety? Do these emotions hold you back from living the life you know you're meant to live? If so, stay tuned for another session of the Mobile Sanctuary. Welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary Where the broken find their way In the quiet of your heart You're never alone Welcome to the place you call Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary. Thank you for joining us. Here is your host, Pastor Phil Diaz. Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary. I'm Pastor Phil Diaz, and this is Church Anywhere. Woo! All right, so before we dive in, I want to simply invite all of you to help us grow this wonderful online community. So take a moment and be able to hit that subscribe button, hit the follow button, and help us to be able to share this with as many people as possible, okay? Also, we would love to be able to hear from you, so please drop us a comment down below, okay? Let us know what you're thinking, all right? If you have any questions, you can drop those in the comments as well, and we would love to be able to pray for you here tonight. So please let us know if you have any prayer requests. Drop those in the chat, all right? Well, we're going to go ahead and dive into tonight's topic, so let's go! Have you ever felt it? That tightening in your chest, those restless thoughts that keep you awake, staring at the ceiling as the night drags on? Who are these invited guests that are wrecking havoc on our soul? They are fear and anxiety. They show up unannounced, barging in without knocking setting up camp in the corners of our minds. They whisper lies, telling us we're not enough, that something bad is coming, or that we're never going to get out of this mess. They make us feel like we're drowning, struggling to keep our heads above water. As they nestle themselves in our minds, they try to help us find new and better ways to deal with the pain and suffering of life. They help us find coping mechanisms. They help us try to be normal, but deep down, we know there is nothing normal about the storm of emotions that they helped us bury deep down below. They make us push harder, make us dig deeper, make us muster up a form of courage to conquer the old feelings, the ones that seem to hurt so much. Yet through it all, we find ourselves maddeningly returning to the same place over and over. We feel tired, we feel drained, and sometimes we feel unloved, locking ourselves in a room with fear on one side and anxiety on the other. As they weigh in on every thought, every conversation we have with ourselves and pose as the only friends that we have in this life. The world around us doesn't make it easier. Headlines scream, phones buzz, and social media paints a picture of everyone else's perfect life while we're just trying to keep our heads above the waters that drown us in despair. It's hard to keep your head up high when it's weighed down with so much, so what do we do? Is there something to fix this situation and remedy the problem? We honestly try to hold it together, we pretend we're okay, but in those quiet moments, the walls feel like they're closing in, but what if, just for a moment, we stopped running from the fear and faced it. What if the real battle isn't about finding the strength within ourselves, but about finding something, someone who's stronger? Maybe overcoming fear and anxiety isn't about banishing them completely, but discovering a deeper peace that meets us right in the chaos. A peace that doesn't come from our effort, but from knowing we're not alone in it. What if the question isn't just how can I overcome? But who can calm my storm? There's a place, a person, who's been waiting to meet us in the mess all along. So I ask you, wherever you are,
Could it be that the answer to your fear isn't about being tougher, but about trusting that you don't have to face it alone? So have you ever found yourself overwhelmed by fear or weighed down by anxiety? You know, these feelings are way more common than what we might think, especially in today's world where there is so much uncertainty. You know, I myself have had so many fears and anxieties over the years. Uh, a few of them I'm just going to share with you here. Uh, one of them, it's silly, but it's the fear of swimming. <laughs> And I have a fear of swimming because I have a great anxiety of drowning. And I have a great anxiety of drowning because it's happened many times before. And so there is that fear. Um, I have a fear of driving sometimes in big cities or unknown areas because I have an anxiety of just trying to find my way around. Um, you know, when you live in small towns, you kind of know all of the things that you need to know and where to go. And then when you get into places you've never been, there can sometimes be an anxiety of like, man, I just wish I knew my way around much better um, so I could get around the traffic. And so sometimes I have a fear of that because all I want to do at the end of the day is just make it home safe. To get a little bit deeper, you know, I have a fear of failing and the anxiety that drives that fear is simply disappointing those that love me. And I have a fear of just failing people. And the reason I think that that is there is because at heart, I'm a people pleaser. And so because of all these things, you know, this fear is apparent within my life. And then even going just deeper, sometimes I just simply even have the fear where I'm, I'm not even good enough. All right. And the anxiety that drives that is, you know, not being a good enough um, husband, not being a good enough father, not being a good enough even pastor. And so in my life, I've seen how fear and anxiety work and they work usually together to drive and spur one another on. And I share all of these things with you here today because I want you to know that I am not Superman. I, too, deal with a lot of different things and issues within my own life. But fear and anxiety often work together. And when they do work together, they masquerade themselves as protective forces within our lives that are whispering to keep us away um, from all harm and failure. And so they'll make up things and do things within our lives that sometimes aren't even real, but they'll do that to help protect us. But the reality is, because of that, <laughs> they can often also paralyze us. And they can trap us in a cycle of doubt and hesitation. And oftentimes, fear and anxiety can tell us lies about our worth, about our abilities. They can tell us all kinds of things, even about our future, um, that's not even come true. And it can sometimes even overshadow the truth that God has for us within our lives. And tonight, that's what I want to be able to explore. I want to be able to explore these questions and more as we dig into the scriptures and we see how fear and anxiety work. And I'm just here to simply tell you this word of encouragement, that fear and anxiety do not have to rule over us. I'm going to say that again. Fear and anxiety do not have to rule over us. Amen. And so the Bible offers us powerful tools in the scriptures to help overcome these emotions and to be able to live a life that is full of courage and full of peace from God. And so our journey tonight begins with a simple verse from the book of Joshua. Let's check that out right now. Our main scripture for tonight comes from Joshua 1.9, where God says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This verse comes from a pivotal moment in the life of Joshua as he prepares to lead the Israelites into the promised land after Moses' death. So how did Joshua end up in this situation, you may ask? Well, Joshua became the leader of Israel after serving faithfully as Moses' assistant and military commander. He was chosen by God to succeed Moses and lead the Israelites into the Promised Land following Moses' death. Yet, Joshua was at a crossroads. The man who had faithfully followed Moses now stood on the edge of something bigger than himself, leading a nation into the unknown. 
You see, fear and anxiety were not just theoretical. They were real, looming giants. Joshua felt the weight of his new role, the uncertainty of battles ahead, and the pressure of living up to his predecessor. But instead of letting fear and anxiety call the shots, Joshua made a powerful choice. He tuned into God's voice above all else. God told him, be strong and courageous. And Joshua decided to let those words define him, not the fear that could have gripped his heart. Just like Joshua, we have a choice every day. We can let fear and anxiety dominate us, or we can listen to what God says about us, that he is with us, he goes before us, and he will never leave us. That's how we face our fears with strength and courage, by leaning into his promise over every other voice. And now, back to Pastor Phil. So this verse is a powerful reminder that God is with us. Amen? And because of his presence, we can face our fears with strength and courage. But the question is, why don't we? Right? <laughs> why don't we? How do we actually put this into practice when fear and anxiety seem so overwhelming? You know, some of you may ask, how does this actually apply to my life when all I've ever done is live my entire life with fear and anxiety in my head, in my heart, all around me, through everything I see? So tonight we're going to take a deeper look at what this means for us within our daily lives. What does this mean for us as believers and as Christians? And we're going to come back to answer this question, how can I overcome fear and anxiety? So stay tuned. What fears are you letting lead you today? And what would it look like if you truly believed God's words over your life instead? Comment in the chat below. We would love to hear your thoughts as we examine this question together. All right, we are back, and we are here with our first main topic of discussion, and that is overcoming fear with God's presence. Amen? Say that to yourself. Say, overcoming fear with God's presence. So the first thing that we have to do is recognize God's presence in the midst of fear and anxiety. And so the first step in overcoming fear is to remember this. We are not alone. Amen? We're not alone. And we have to remember that God promises to be with us wherever we go, just as he was with Joshua, just as he led the Israelites into the promised land. Now, to be able to expand upon that, I want to share with you from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, simply says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Whoo! What a great verse. I hope that this is encouraging to you here tonight. You know, this verse is a powerful reminder that God's presence is a source of strength and comfort, as it should be. And so then, how do we take this verse and apply it? Well, first of all, this is where I think it just kind of starts. We have to recognize that God is with us when we face our fears. And when we face our fears, we can be confident because of his presence that is going before us, that is going behind us, that is going around us, that is surrounding our lives. His presence doesn't just dismiss itself. His presence stays with us. Amen? And as God goes before us, he helps fight our battles with us. Amen? You're not fighting alone. 
And when he fights our battles, he helps provide the courage and strength that we need in every single struggle that we face. So many of the fears that I've had in my life, I've had to overcome through the power of God working in my life. And so God promises to strengthen us and he promises to uphold us and he promises us to be able to help uh, change the way that we approach our fears, how he can help us shift our focus from what intimidates us to the one who empowers us. And yet, if this is all there is to it, then why, oh why, why do we still live in fear of our hearts and minds and of all the little things that creep into our life. Some of you out there right now are probably asking the question, yeah, is it really that easy? It seems easy for you. I've tried to do this. It's not worked for me. I'm in a season of my life right now where I just don't feel anything is working. I'm in a season of my life where I just feel really dry. You know, and to answer that, honestly, this is just what I'm going to say. The answer to all of this is that it's a daily decision. It's a daily battle. It's also a daily choice on how we decide to overcome fear. You see, overcoming fear isn't just a one-time fix, all right? And I think that's where we get a little bit dismayed is because we just want the easy fix. But overcoming fear is not a one-time fix. It's a constant, intentional choice to trust God's presence, to trust God's word, to trust God's promises over any of our fears and anxieties. And I know it's not easy. Trust me, it's not. But I also know this, that with God's help, it is possible. All right? So for me, simply speaking out of my own experience, God has helped me conquer more fears than I ever could on my own. You know, I used to have a terrible fear of being in front of people. (laughs) Imagine that. And I would, uh, if I was in a crowd, I would usually have my head hanging really low, wouldn't try to make eye contact, you know, all of those sorts of things. And God has helped change me in ways that I can't even describe. God has helped change my my personality in that. In fact, he has changed me so much. I mean, I speak now in public several times a week as a pastor. And so God has the ability to be able to transform our situations and be able to help move us into a position where our life can be used to give him all the glory that he deserves. Amen? So let's take a moment and let's be able to discuss this question here tonight. How does knowing that God is with you impact the way that you face fear. All right, I'm going to read that again. How does knowing that God is with you impact the way that you face fear? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As Pastor Phil just mentioned, how does knowing that God is with you impact the way you face fear? Tell us a testimony or story that could help those watching understand this idea better. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. All right, we are back, and we're going to talk about our next point here tonight, and that is casting your anxieties on God. Casting your anxieties on God. So fear and anxiety often stem from trying to control things that are beyond our control. And we we feel overwhelmed when we take on burdens that we were never meant for us to carry alone. 
And if that's you, I simply got a great word of encouragement for you here tonight. It comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It reminds us to cast all of our anxiety on him because he cares for you. I want to read that again. Cast all. Did you catch that word? All. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now, I want to tell you this verse is powerful because it's an invitation to release all of our burdens over to the Lord. Amen. Have you ever released the things that burden you the most over to God? Have you ever released them and actually put them in his hands? All right. So your worries, your concerns, your fears, your anxieties, all of these things. Have you ever actually released them to the Lord, place them in his hands, and then walk away and not take them back? Have you ever released your burdens in this way and just felt the power of God working and moving in your life as you feel lighter and you just simply feel more free? And if that's you, type that in the chat. All right. Have you ever released your burdens to see God then work and move in your situations? Maybe even beyond the way that you thought it would work out. I know that these can be sometimes tough questions because depending on how you answer these questions, okay, is kind of giving an answer into how you really see how God works in your life. Is God just some sort of distant deity that's out there somewhere? Is God just something that you just talk about when you're in your church circle, but not really out there in the world or even in your own home? I mean, how do you think about God How do you think about how he works? And do you think that God is concerned about you? You see, as a Christian, if we claim to know Jesus, our Savior, guess what? This is the great news. You have the power of God working in you and through you. Amen. The same power that rose a Savior from a borrowed grave is alive and well, and it is within you. Yet the problem is, as Christians, How many times do we hold on to things that we know we probably don't need to hold on to, we don't need to fret about, we don't need to grieve about, we just simply need to give them over to the Lord? And this is what I'm talking about. I think sometimes we hold on to things, we like to fret about things, we like to worry, all right? Some of us like to be able to stay so busy worrying and being so busy with all of the fears and anxieties in our life that sometimes we just let all of life pass us by. And I think sometimes we even do that just because we want to be able to come up with a solution to try to fix our own self. So we think, well, if I think about this fear, if I think about this worry, I'm going to have an answer on how to fix it within my own life. And You know, sometimes maybe you do, but I really think that in the end, if that's how you think all the time, trust me, because I felt it in my own life, it will oftentimes lead you more or less to a place of despair. Because here's what I've learned. I have learned that you cannot fix all of your own problems all with your own self. (laughs) Okay. Cannot fix all of your own problems with all of your own self at times. And I think this is where anxiety really takes hold the most within our lives. It can take hold within us, within that kind of line of thinking, and it can take its toll on us. It can leave us desolate. It can leave us feeling void. But can I simply speak this into your life? All right, I'm going to say two words, but God, but God, but God reminds us in his word that anxiety isn't to be placed back on us. It's to be placed all on him. And so again, as I read 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I'm here to tell you tonight, God loves you. If you haven't heard that within your life, I'm here to tell you right now, God truly loves you. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you, to take away your sins, your burdens, your shame, and your guilt. Take away the fears and anxieties within your life to be placed upon him. Amen? And as Jesus died for us, and he did all of these things for us, he did that out of a heart of love and grace. Trust me, he loves you. And I hope that this is an important message for someone out there listening right now, because I know how the enemy works. I'm sure the enemy is telling you right now to change the channel, to be able to uh, play something else right now, to do something else, 
just to get up and leave, all right? And I believe that the enemy is just trying to work overtime in your life. And he wants to manipulate your life with fear and anxiety. But here's a word for you here today. I just want you to know that you can be free from all of that in the name of Jesus. So be free. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free and let God take all of those problems. Take your anxiety, all of it, and place it in his hands and never look back. I know that God can deal with it. I know that God can handle it. And I know that he can help us have a victory over all of it. And when we cast our anxieties on God, we free ourselves from the weight of worry. And this act of trust allows God to bring us the peace that we could never find on our own. And sometimes that may even look like God leading us to be able to get medical help for maybe what we need, to be able to uh, maybe deal with some of the mental health issues maybe that maybe we've carried within our lives for way too long. And so however that works, God will help lead us into a place where fear and anxiety can be silenced. All right, so what do you think about this idea of casting all of your anxieties on God, all right? Take a moment and share with us in the chat. Share your thoughts and let us know what you think. What do you think about this idea of God taking all of your anxieties? Let us know in the chat. As Pastor Phil just said, what do you think about this idea of casting all of your anxieties on God? Do you take time out of your day to talk to him about all of the things that bring about anxiety in your life? How has God worked in your life with anxiety? Please share your thoughts with us in the chat. Hey, we are back and we're looking at our last point. And so I think to be able to conquer fear and anxiety, we have to be able to find strength. And I know for me, I find my strength in the word of God. And God's word is a powerful weapon against fear and anxiety. You know, when we actually open up the scriptures and we meditate on the scriptures, we begin to fill our minds and our hearts with God's truth which can hopefully displace the lies and the fears that often plague us. Consider what Philippians chapter four, verses six through seven say. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Whoo, I love that. And if you love that, say, I love it in the chat below. All right. So this passage in the Bible, it reminds us again that prayer is a key strategy in overcoming anxiety. When we bring our concerns to God, he replaces all of our anxiety with his peace. And it's a peace that goes beyond our human understanding, that surpasses all understanding. 
It's a peace that when it comes into your heart and it comes into your life, you feel fulfilled and satisfied in a way to where all of the fear and anxiety around you can never make you feel safe. And I think that's really the true purpose of fear and anxiety is to try to make you feel safe. But for me, the thing that makes me feel the most safe is when I honestly go before the Lord, I give him my heart, give him my burdens, and I remember that he can help carry them. And then I'm encouraged and strengthened by what he says within the word. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then the after effect is the peace of God transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, when we bring all of our burdens, when we bring all of our concerns, when we give God all of the fear and the anxiety, he replaces it. And that is so important because oftentimes in our life, we're always looking for like, well, how do I get out of all of this fear and anxiety? Guess what? It just simply comes when you can come before the presence of the Lord and be with him and let him have all of your burdens. All right. So how do we actually incorporate God's word into our daily life to combat fear and anxiety? All right. Let's talk about that here in the chat. We'd love to be able to hear from you. Drop your comments down below. Pastor Phil just talked about how the Bible is one of the most important ways that we can conquer fear and anxiety head on. So how do you incorporate God's word into your daily life to combat fear and anxiety? Does the Bible bring any kind of encouragement for you in regards to fear and anxiety? Let us know in the chat. Here are some practical steps that you can take to overcome fear and anxiety. Number one, daily prayer. Make it a habit to bring your fears and anxieties to God in prayer each and every day. Trust that he hears you and that he cares for you. Number two, scripture memorization. Commit to memorizing verses like Joshua 1.9 and Philippians 4, 6 through 7 to memory. And let these truths guide your thoughts when fear tries to take over. And number three, Community support. Connect with a true community of believers, of Christians, who can pray with you and support you in your journey to overcome fear and anxiety. Sharing your struggles with others can be incredibly powerful. Let's take a moment to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come before you and we acknowledge the fears and anxieties that have just been weighing on our hearts. We thank you for your promise to be with us, Lord, and for the strength and the courage that you offer us through your presence, God. Lord, we confess that we often try to handle all of our fears on our own. We try to handle all of our own anxieties. And sometimes we just simply forget that you're with us and that you deeply care about all of who we are in our situations. Help us, Lord, to surrender our anxieties to you, trusting that you are in control. We thank you, God, for your word, which brings us comfort and peace. We pray for our mobile sanctuary community, especially those who are struggling with fear and anxiety. We pray that at this time that you surround them with your love and fill them with your peace that surpasses all understanding. We ask that you simply work and move amongst those that's watching here today. We ask that you just simply do a work within us here today to stand up 
and to be strong within you and what you say. Help us to be strong in your word. We ask that you help surround us with your Holy Spirit, Father, as we lead lives that lead us closer into your heart and lead us closer into being a holy people. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight on the Mobile Sanctuary. I hope that this session has helped provide you with some tools and encouragement to help you overcome fear and anxiety in your life. Remember, God is with you. God loves you. And you can face any challenge with God with courage. So we'll be back next week with another session. So stay tuned and keep seeking God in all things. Until then, I'm Pastor Phil, and this has been Church Anywhere. We'll see you next time. Welcome to the